Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed
Andrew's online service whether you've been joining us from the beginning or have recently joined us on these online services or maybe it's your first time 
you're more than welcome and we hope you enjoy and feel part of our family. So this week we're continuing on our series on uh, looking at all good gifts, looking at the different ways we can serve and honour God. So in the last few weeks we've looked at leadership, we've looked at spiritual gifts and today we're going to look at the creative gifts. So more on that later on. But online services, same as in church, some notices. So next weekend, we're finishing this series on our gifts with our Thanksgiving service, our Harvest Festival. So it would be great to see as many people as we can back into church, um, those who feel comfortable doing so, as we continue to return back to some normality with a special service of Thanksgiving um, within our church and also for the community. We'll be back singing still with masks um, and we have coffee after every service now. And next week we might even have some live music as well. Uh, watch this space, let's hope that we can do that. On Tuesday, Rachel is going to be leading an opportunity to pray for the work of CAP in church. So this is something that was started when the debt centre started. Um, and we've been doing it online uh, on Zoom every fourth Tuesday, but now we're moving it to in person. Um, so this week it will be in church, not in the hall, but in church from 7.15. And it's for around about 45 minutes to an hour um, kind of time. We will hopefully try to do it online as well. Um, it just depends on some of the logistics in church. Um, but please feel free to join us 7.15 in church uh, to pray for the work of CAP on Tuesday. But back to today. So as I said, we're looking at the creative gifts um, and Mark is gonna give us some thoughts on this um, in a few minutes. So let's take this time, let's still ourselves before God and prepare for this time of worship together. Let's just say, for a few seconds in, in some silence as we think and prepare ourselves for worship. So Father, as we continue in this series using all our gifts, we thank you for all the gifts we use to praise and worship you. Help us to be open to those gifts we've not used before or not discovered and to seek your guidance on how to use all of our gifts wisely to the glory of your name. We ask this in your name. Amen.
First reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 31, beginning at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Take note that I have specially chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, making him skillful and ingenious expert in every craft and a master of design, whether in gold, silver or copper, or cutting precious stones for setting, or carving wood for workmanship of every kind. Further, I have appointed Aholiab, son of Abizamak, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant and I have endowed every skilled craftsman with the skill which he has. They are to make everything that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the ark for the testimony, the cover over it, and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its vessels, the pure lampstand and all its fittings, the altar of incense, the altar of whole offering and all its vessels, the basin and its stand, the stitched vestments, that is the sacred vestments for Aaron the priest and the vestments for his sons when they minister as priests. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we're looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit and we've been looking at how they can be used in the church today. The Stoker began by helping us to look at the gifts that are often associated with, associated with leadership roles from Ephesians chapter 4. And last week I was talking about the spoken or audible gifts that we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and encouraging us to expect them. But also the best way and the safest way that we can bring them to the attention of the whole church when used in public worship. Now today we're going to be looking at the creative gifts that are mentioned in the Bible and their use. And these are sometimes known as the forgotten gifts because we tend to think of them as being skills that people have rather than spiritual gifts. It seems to me that if, as human beings, we're made in the image of God, as it says in Genesis chapter 1, then even the natural skills and the gifts that people are born with and developed could be seen as given by God. But there's also a supernatural manifestation of these gifts through the Holy Spirit. For instance, when someone who has a natural gift or talent say for playing a musical instrument or some creative artwork, when that individual comes into a living relationship with Jesus uh, and by the Holy Spirit, they can often be inspired to use that gift in God's service that takes on a whole new dynamic. It becomes, if you like, uh, uh, empowered and filled with the Spirit to communicate something wonderful to other people. I know that um, I've been at a, a meeting um, 
on a couple of occasions, both um, here in the air, local area, uh, but also at um, Spring Harvest, where there are people who are artistically gifted, and during the services, during the meetings, during the gathering, um, they create artwork that is developed as they're doing that, as the as a service or the meeting is continuing, so that it can bring something of beauty and wonder to God, uh, and and you know that artistic gift is being used to demonstrate a, a new expression or a different expression of God to his people. There are also occasions when people who have come to faith in Christ suddenly discover that, that, and des that they have a desire and a gift to step into a new creative gifting. Uh, when Elaine, uh, my wife, was uh, working at a Christian conference center, L.L. Grange, near Lancaster, uh, a friend of hers who came to faith suddenly discovered that uh, he had a gift for music and um, particularly for playing the guitar and he'd never played the guitar before but somehow he, um, God gifted him or through the Holy Spirit God gifted him and he practiced and worked at that and then became a, an important leader of the, the, the music side of worship in in the ministry at L.L. Grange and that was because he got filled with God's Holy Spirit. So what are these creative gifts? Well we see in Exodus 31, uh, one of our readings from today, uh, the way in which God filled Bezalel and it says in 31 verse 4, with skills to make artistic designs for working gold, silver, bronze, cut and set stones, to work with, good, with wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. And he also appointed Ahoelib to help him. But, and he says that he gave the ability also to skilled workers to make everything that I have commanded you in chapter, in verse 6 of chapter 31. So it seems as well as Bezalel and Ahoelib, they also, he also equipped many other people with skills and gifts to work and to enhance the, the work of the tabernacle for worship of him. And in our reading that we're going to hear from Psalm 150 and in many other places in the Psalms and other parts of the Bible we read about the music and the way it was used in and other creative gifts uh, to bring glory to God in corporate and private worship. In fact one of the readings we had at the end of our Nehemiah series uh, mentioned that the ways in which uh, the, the choirs and the musicians uh, led the people around the walls of the city of, of Jerusalem after the walls had been completed. And there's this great sense in which those musical gifts can be inspired to be used to bring glory to God and to great, give great praise. So let's look in a bit more detail at these gifts. First of all, craftsmanship. And this could include things like artwork, metalwork, woodwork, working with fabrics, and so on. And a very good definition that I, I often use for this is from the uh, Willow Creek Network course, which helps us to discover spiritual gifts. And it says this, the, the creative craftsmanship is the divine enablement to creatively design and or construct items used for ministry. People with this gift work with wood, cloth, paints, metal, glass, and other raw materials, making things that increase the effectiveness of others' ministries, enjoying serving with their hands to meet tangible needs, design and build tangible items and resources for ministry use, work with different kinds of tools and are skilled with their hands. Well, does that chime with you or with people you know? I can think of several people in our church life to whom this applies. How can we encourage them and you in this wonderful aspect of ministry, the gift of craftsmanship? And then the other aspect in this is creative communication and that can include things like music, dance, drama, storytelling and so on. And again from the Network Ministry course uh, this is a very good definition the divine enablement to communicate God's truth through a variety of art forms. People with this gift use the arts of, to communicate God's truth 
to develop and use artistic skills such as drama, writing, art, music, dance, etc. Use variety and creativity to captivate people and cause them to consider Christ's message. Challenge people's perspective of God through various forms of the arts and demonstrate fresh ways to express the Lord's ministry and message. And again, does that or any of that make your heart excited or do you see it in people that you know in our church? Just from a personal perspective uh, with this creative communication, I, I used to love the puppet team ministry that we had in, in, in St Andrews and it was used in many of our services and in some way some ways it's a great shame that that had to be curtailed for various different reasons it was both in terms of people being able to to participate and also to leave that and i think it'd be wonderful if if that was able to be picked up again and there's other aspects of of, of creative uh, of craftsmanship and creative communication that could be used in the life of our church there's also people who do creatively and wonderfully with the skill of their hand do things that enhance all that we do as a church but can we encourage them are you are other people wanting to be able to develop those skills and we'll be looking, thinking more about that in the second part of uh, this morning's thinking about uh, the, the the creative gifts that God gives to us to use so just for the time being we're going to pause and just think about that. What is it that God has called us all to do, to do? And some of that may be with the creative gifts and with other gifts as well that we can use to his glory. In 1 John 1, we hear the words, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's say together the words of the confession which will be on the screen. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us, for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you.
king of endless world. No one could express how much you deserve. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his temple. Praise his strength in heaven. Praise him for the mighty things he hath done. Praise his supreme greatness. Praise him with trumpets. Praise him with harps and lyres. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with harps and flutes. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise the Lord, all living creatures. Praise the Lord. Well, in the first part of this topic, I talked about the gifts that are used and can be encouraged to, for greater use in the life of our church, and particularly these creative gifts. And the main theme of our talk is to look at the ways in which the creative gifts and the arts can be used to enhance our church life and our worship to encourage others in their worship. And if you feel that you've been equipped in some way with these gifts to bring them to bring glory to God and to use them in ministry, then please come and talk with me or with someone else who you know who uses these gifts in, in, a, in our church in any way. And we can see how these can be developed and used to enhance our church life and worship together. We need, you see, we need to enable these gifts and the expression of our wonderful God in worship and not just worship in church but in life in general and we need them in all their variety it would be lovely to encourage more musicians people who are gifted in helping to lead our music side of worship it would be lovely to encourage people who have craft gifts to be able to use them to enhance our our worship perhaps with um, things that, that help us to focus on who God is in worship. We have some wonderful um, hangings and um, things that are used have been done by, by Helen and others who have, have uh, used their gifts very skillfully to enhance our worship. We just had a new uh, music cabinet built by uh, Martin um, for the new PA system in church. And again, um, the time and the skills that he took to do that are going to be wonderful to be used um, for enhancing the worship through our technology uh, in, the, in the PA system that we have in church. And there's also all sorts of other gifts that, that we can use. I mentioned beforehand the, the puppet ministry that used to be a wonderful part of our church. But if there are things that you feel inspired by or you feel as if well, I haven't really found my niche, my place, then 
it would be wonderful to hear from you. And so we do need lots of people. We need everybody to be involved in the church life, in our worship and, and, the, and the different things that we do in church life. So whether you feel equipped by God or whether you feel that others with these gifts that I've mentioned this morning and in previous weeks are there to be, to be used for the life of the church, then I hope that we can encourage you and to pray about the ways in which they can be used and how these equipping can be uh, there for the enhancement of life and worship as a church to glorify him and to encourage others. Now this second part of the talk is going to be very short and I just really want to end by reading a story from the network course which demonstrates something of the, the way that these gifts are to be used and not just the ones I mentioned this morning but other gifts and that the giftedness that we have because only we can do certain things that nobody else can do. And this is a little animal story which I think makes the point. Once upon a time Right after creation, all the animals got together and formed a school. They established a well-rounded curriculum of swimming, running, climbing and flying. All the animals were required to take all the courses. The duck excelled at swimming. In fact, he was better than the instructor. But he only made passing grades in climbing and was poor in running. He was so slow, he had to stay after school to practice running day after day. This caused his web feet to become so badly worn, he only became average in swimming. But average was quite acceptable, so no one worried much about it, except the duck. The rabbit was top in her class in running. But after a while, she developed a twitch in her leg from all the time she spent in the water, trying to improve her swimming. The squirrel was a peak performer in climbing, but he constantly was frustrated in the flying class. His body became so worn from all the hard landings that he did not too, do too well in the climbing and ended up being pretty poor in running. The eagle was a continual problem student. She constantly had to be disciplined for being a nonconformist. In climbing class, she would always beat everyone else to the top of the tree, but insisted in using her own way to get there. Now in this story, each of the animals had their particular design. When they did what they were designed to do, they excelled. When they tried to operate outside that area of expertise, they were not nearly as effective. Now let me ask you a question. Can ducks run? Yes, of course they can run. But is that what they do best? No. It's been observed that the church is full of running ducks. People who are running hard, doing their best, waddling for Jesus. But they're getting tired, frustrated, burned out, and eventually they drop out. And that's why it's so important to know your spiritual gift and why it's so important. Serving according to your unique design enables to give your best and your enthusiasm and with effectiveness for the church. Amen.
Today we're going to affirm our beliefs in a form of creed which uses words from the book of Revelation. It reminds us of God's ultimate creativity in his establishment of the world and everything in it. We say together in faith. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is, and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created, and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain. For with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Pray is a word of just four letters. But to pray is a profound thing and not always an easy thing. To help me, I sometimes use the four letters of the word. P for pause. R for rejoice. A for ask. Y for yes and amen. Let's pray this morning using the four letters of the word. Father God, we pause. This morning we have come before you and we are waiting and resting in your presence. Over the last year or more, we have stopped many of the things we've been used to doing. We've become used to pausing. This morning, in a moment of quiet, we still our hearts. We prepare to listen to you. We rest in your peace. Father God, we rejoice. We remember what you have done when you created each one of us. When you saved each one of us 
through the cross and how you sustain and help each one of us through your spirit. We thank you for the riches and the beauty of the whole creation and, in for, and for our part in caring for it. And we thank you for the love, the forgiveness and the freedom that Jesus has brought to each of us. And we thank you for the privilege that we have of being able to pray to you. Father God, we ask, we ask you to help us to pray, to help us to know your presence with us throughout the day, to help us to hear and to know what you want us to do and who you want us to be as we do it. May you inspire us to use the gifts you give each one of us. May we all be united as one church. Show us, Father, the places we need to go, the things we need to do, and how we should do them. Father God, we say yes and amen. We want to cooperate with you to use your gifts. We want to support and care for each other. We want to build to create new things, to grow, to accept and welcome others. We say together, yes and amen. As your people, we all say together, yes and amen. So that brings us to the end of our service today and um, we hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something from this about the creative gifts and how we can use them to, to glorify God. So a closing prayer, let's say this together. Lord, please give me ideas that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard and no mind has imagined. The root of creativity lies within you you know where the gaps are. Please plant ideas in my heart and mind that will help me fill these gaps according to your plan and purpose. Amen. Praise him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole land praise him. Praise him, the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the
Yeah.